Let me start with this. The magazine industry is dead. It's been dead forever. Sports Illustrated is kind of falling. You know, they're just, there's no, it's not as vibrant as it used to be. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine officially is dead after this. They had a poll. It's a music magazine. Players that could replace Tom Brady as the face of the league. And I'm not joking. They apparently not only struggle with music, but football. Uh, they list defensive ends, Miles Garrett, Jalen Ramsey, a corner in Jacksonville, an interior lineman from the Rams, and Dak Prescott. I'm going to tell you now, none are going to replace Tom Brady as the face of the league. He's a quarterback, seven Super Bowls, one five, and I suspect he'll add a one to both the appearances and the titles this year, eight and six. Nobody's ever going to equal that again, and I'm going to tell you why, because they were lucky. Let me talk about the Golden State Warriors dynasty right now. It's the dynasty that people believe has legs for years and years and years to come. I am not in any way saying Steve Kerr is not smart and the owners aren't brilliant and Steph Curry did not revolutionize the game with the three. I am not saying that. But they were lucky. Clay Thompson smoked pot in college, got caught, dropped in the draft, or the Warriors never get him. And they're not getting Kevin Durant without Clay Thompson and Steph together. They drafted Graymon Green in the second round. If they thought he was so great, they'd have picked him and moved earlier. They got lucky on Clay, and they got lucky on Draymond. And without those two, they wouldn't have a title. LeBron's always dominated Steph head-to-head, and they wouldn't have Kevin Durant. I am in no way saying they're not smart. They're not conscientious. They've not been really good on the analytics. Damn straight, it's luck. Clay Thompson doesn't get busted. Good kid. Just smoked to join. It's college. Who cares? NBA scouts drop him a bit. Warriors get him. Draymond Green. Nobody in the Bay Area or the league thought he would be this good. And for the record, Steph Curry's ankles are made of paper mache. They've gotten breaks with him, too. That's why they can afford with the salary cap all these guys together. Because Steph's ankles got hurt early, allowing them to sign a four-year, very affordable deal. Luck, 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 luck. Same with the New England Patriots. There are four things that will never, ever get aligned again like this. They have the ultimate brilliant chip-on-the-shoulder head coach. Bill Belichick, living in the shadow of Bill Parcells, has had a chip on his shoulder forever. And you know what chip-on-the-shoulder does for people. It is a lifetime of drive. So... The next great head coach happens to be in New England with a massive chip on his shoulder. Doesn't want to write books, doesn't want to be on TV, doesn't want to do press conferences, it's all football. That's number one. Number two, he just happens to draft and get lucky. By the way, he passed on him six to- five times. Belichick gets Tom Brady, who wasn't loved in the draft, who wasn't loved at Michigan, the ultimate chip on the shoulder quarterback. They align. What are the chances of the ultimate brilliant coach with a chip on his shoulder aligning after everybody in the league, including the Patriots, passed on him for five rounds, getting the quarterback that's got the best chip on his shoulder, biggest ever? Then they also have another unbelievable break. They play in the most dysfunctional division in football. The Jets, Bills, and Dolphins have players. Their front offices are a mess. There's no other division with that kind of mess, allowing them to experiment in September allowing them to use the Bills, to steal players from the Bills, knowing six times a year they go into games with a better quarterback, a better front office, a better head coach, giving them buys in the playoffs and home field advantage. That's the third advantage. So the chances of getting the the chip-on-the-shoulder brilliant coach of a generation, the the chip-on-the-shoulder brilliant quarterback of a generation – being in the most dysfunctional league, allowing you to experiment, get buys and home field advantage, and then the fourth break, and nobody really gets credit for it, they're a cold-weather team, which is a huge advantage in the playoffs in January when a warm-weather or a dome team travels to you. They got four absolute convergences that will never, ever happen again. I mean, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers has the coach, but it's not a glamorous market, and they don't attract free agents. Big Ben's got the weather advantage, and he doesn't have an elite, schematic, all-time head coach. What about Breeze? What about him? It's a tougher division. What about Rivers? Weak ownership. Warm weather. 
You got the coach chip, the quarterback chip, the division dysfunctional, the weather edge for late in football seasons. That's never going to happen again. Rolling Stone magazine. Never forget, you didn't even like Nirvana's album, Nevermind. You panned it. Stay in music. You're barely, barely consumable there. If you think a cornerback for Jacksonville, a pass rusher for the second most popular team in L.A., defensive ends in Cleveland are going to surpass Brady, he's going to get to his eighth Super Bowl, probably win his sixth. It'll never be done again. Golden State, the Patriots, love them both. But you're delusional if you don't think some of that is absolute luck. Let me stay with this. There was a very, very, very physical football game on Monday. Here's what we know about the NFL. It's a very popular league. It's a great TV show. It's got many strengths. They promote. They market very well. Games are close. Parity, you can go last in a division to first. Happens all the time. God, the NFC South, last to first, last to first, last to first. Here's the one thing they don't do very well at all dole out punishment they're clueless it's like a a library trying to put on a concert series like i just it just doesn't work the nfl is not good at all in punishment they just they're really terrible at it and by the way there's a lot of companies that are formidable here starbucks tried to get into ice cream and they did a movie and it they just do coffee and they're really good at coffee that's what they do they're really good at coffee So Monday night, it is amazing how they have butchered this. There were four, four, four really, really big, scary, or illegal hits in the NFL. And they were four totally different hits. Okay, that hit Ryan Shea's ear. That's a bad break. It's bad luck. It's a totally legal hit. Juju Smith-Schuster is illegal. That's not worth a suspension. That's a football hit. Shay's ear is just if his head is up and not down. It's a legal hit. It's in the flow of the game. It is terrifying, but it's just a, it's a bad break. Good news, he's improving. Let's go to the juju hit. That is a illegal hit, just like going over 55 miles an hour is a speeding ticket, but everybody goes over it. This is a very solid football hit, deemed now illegal. It's a fine, not a suspension. The NFL butchered it. They suspended him. That's a football play. In the moment, in the play, hitting the dirtiest player in the league as he's coming for a tackle. The third hit was in the end zone. Okay, let me tell you about the third hit in the end zone. They suspended the guy for that. That's not a suspendable hit. That is not a suspendable hit. That is an illegal hit in the NFL. A team's falling apart, trying to jar the football from the best wide receiver in football. It should be a fine, not a suspension. And by the way, today they finally overturned it this morning. And then there's the Gronk hit. To show you how little they don't understand the punishment, this was easily the most egregious, outrageous hit of the weekend. When Gronk hit a defenseless player at a 270-pound guy at a horrific angle, that is frightening. So in review, the NFL is good at a lot. They don't know what they're doing with suspensions. We've seen this in the domestic violence cases. It's just not their thing. They should, they should farm it out. Have a company do it. Shazier, legal. Terrifying, but legal. Juju, good football hit. Small fine. End zone, that's a football hit. It's just fine. Gronk, got the same as Juju, and until this morning, the same as George Iloka? What? I've been watching football 40 years. That Gronk thing is as egregious as anything I have ever seen. You think I'm a Patriot homer. I'd have thrown him out for two or three games. You could have taken him off the field for a month. I'm not so sure Belichick and Gronk are going to last beyond this year. I'm dead serious. I don't think Gronk's head is there, and I don't think Belichick's ever been part of something like that. And Christine's story will talk about that in 10 minutes. But this league does a lot right. They massively overreacted. Because of the Ryan Shazier terrifying moment, they went way over the top. Let's not kid ourselves. The Juju and the Iloka, those are football plays. And in today's NFL, they're they're fines. They're not suspensions. Gronk is an outrageous play that should have drawn a multiple-game suspension. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1. First Things First with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.